Virginia is and who America is, and we believe the equity component is a necessary and important one. We hope that it sets a template for site selections to come, that that should be an important component. But we believe very strongly that Springfield knocks it out of the park on that as the other criteria. I've been involved in this as a Virginia senator, but I want to now bring the senior senator who has been involved in it deeply, not only as the senator who lives in Northern Virginia, but as somebody whose leadership in the Senate on matters of intelligence and national security give him a unique perspective, particularly with respect to the mission compatibility of the Springfield site for FBI future headquarters. Mark. Well, thank you, Tim. And, and um, Andrea and Irma, thank you for being here. There were, we have about 35 or 40 folks who are part of our presentation. They may be trickling out. Um, uh, we've got to do this presentation, take a question or two, and then rush back because the IRS commissioner is uh, up for a vote, and I think they need our votes um, so that we can make sure the IRS becomes a more useful and, and user-friendly entity. Um, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to start on equity and, and, and move through the criteria. Um, Tim's already, we've already made mention of the Springfield itself being majority minority, uh, other than English first language. Um, Andrea represents parts of Prince William where Quantico is, again, majority minority. Arlington, Alexandria, uh, hugely diverse populations. But what, one of the things that was um, uh, really, I think, meaningful when we heard from President Washington at GMU and heard from Marymount, um, I challenge anyone. Marymount, one of the Hispanic serving universities, only a few in the whole country, uh, two thirds female, um, huge number of language uh, spoken at Marymount University. Those are the kind of people we, we need as FBI agents. George, George Mason. George Mason is the most, I think President Washington said, either one or two most diverse um, universities in the whole country. Don't believe me, go to the George Mason campus and walk around and you see the new face of Virginia and you see the new face of, of Virginia there. We had a, uh, an individual representing the Muslim community inside who talked about a 20 year partnership with the FBI in a community that is extraordinarily strong in Virginia. That we need that partnership. We need more FBI agents of multiple faiths. So we are happy to go against any location uh, on the diversity uh, standpoint. Needs of the FBI. Um, it, it has been stunning to me that some have said that maybe the needs of the FBI somehow uh, uh, shouldn't be as considered so highly. In the end of the day, we're making it a 50-year decision for the men and women of the FBI. The idea that proximity to Quantico, I think there are 2,400 trips uh, a day or a month or whatever, a week, um, and we'll I'll clarify that. Come on, come on back over here, guys. Um, that's a relevant criteria. You can't walk, take that away. I mean, matter of fact, Quantico has been mentioned on the FBI process at least the last eight or nine years in the federal documentation of language that has been bounced around along the way. Uh, we had a great, long, long-term intelligence professional who I think you know, spoke extraordinarily movingly about how after 9/11. We had the intelligence, but we didn't work together. And the idea that the need to have the FBI interact with the CIA, the ODNI, the NRO, the NGA, and a host of other entities that are in Northern Virginia that you all are not even cleared to know about is absolutely critical if we're going to build that community need. And we, we, think, we talk again about particularly the immigrant community that's moved in. They have moved into this community in Northern Virginia, because Virginia, you know, and we think about it back when we were governor, Governor Youngkins was with us today, Virginia made the investments that maybe other communities didn't on education. We have some of the greatest public schools in America in Northern Virginia. We've got the best high school in America in Northern Virginia. That's a plus, that is a plus for the FBI and we had not only intelligence professionals, but FBI veterans speak to that. So 
we've talked about diversity. We've talked about a bit about um, uh, the needs, the long-term needs of the FBI. Let me talk about the cost issue. The current tenant, um, first conversation starting about moving the tenant uh, in, in the public domain started in 1989. I'm chair of the Intelligence Committee. For three presidents, Obama, Trump, and Biden, the tenant has decided they need to move. They are moving regardless of what happens with the FBI decision. To indicate otherwise is just not true. And the cost of moving is going to take place regardless. So the idea that the FBI can come into this site federally owned and move quickly and the economic development package that we put forward is second to none. Transportation. Uh, we, Tim and I joked a little bit that, you know, what, what Glenn there, that traffic was better when we were governors. Um, <laughs> but traffic really wasn't better in the Springfield Mixing Bowl when we were governor. Sure. You know, the idea of the literally hundreds of millions, it may have actually crossed over to the, the billion dollar number in terms of uh, transportation investments in the Mixing Bowl, hot lanes, uh, 22 uh, bus trips a day that go from this site exist. The metro right there, um, four different interstate highways that converge right there at Springfield. On a transportation basis, whether you are riding, taking the bus, taking the train, riding a bike, this this site is uh, uh, superior in all of those uh, all of those criteria. Um, flexibility of the site, you know, Government owned. Again, um, uh, Rodney Lusk, who is the supervisor from Springfield, having a local elected official, and Rodney's background was he was an economic development expert. Having that kind of local government uh, individual committed to making the process of local approvals you know, move quickly, uh, you, you can't, you know, that is an incredibly uh, important asset. And the fact that it is a site, you got TSA right next door, we've got flexibility that, that no private sector site could ever present. So um, final point is, is, is this. One of the things that Maryland and Virginia did fully agree on, um, and we went to the mat on it, was when in the prior administration this whole effort was put on hold because the White House weighed in uh, on a political basis. Um, what we said to the uh, GSA and to the FBI is all we're asking to do is you set out a criteria we very much honor the notion of having this additional consultation but the law of the land said additional consultation didn't say change the criteria and what we want is this to be a fair transparent process where outside politics is not further intervening and at the end of the day what's in the best interest of the taxpayers what's in the best interest of the men and women of the FBI not just for today but going forward and what will represent the kind of changing nature of the workforce of the FBI to more reflect the changing face of Virginia and the changing face of America. With that, I'll take questions. we got another. B b b b before question, I just want to thank some of the folks who came with us, and then we'll open it up. We had a, a group of about 15 Virginians that made really important presentations, leading off with the governor. But I just want to show you sort of the breadth of our group. President Greg Washington, most of you know President Washington, George Mason, talked an awful lot about existing partnerships with the FBI that could be furthered. Um, Adam Lee is the chief security officer at Dominion, talked a little bit about the protection of the grid and infrastructure at the site, but frankly talked more about his career as an FBI special agent, including serving in Northern Virginia and D.C. and the compatibility of the site. President Irma Becerra, we have two university presidents, both engineers, which is interesting. Irma Becerra at Marymount in, um, University, Virginia's first Hispanic-serving uh, institution, talked about the workforce training that already happens there and more that can be done. And then finally, Andrea Bailey. Andrea is the um, uh, county supervisor in Prince William, in the eastern Prince William, including the Quantico site that has significant FBI equities, and she talked about her role on the board and as an advocate and as a military spouse with a lot of time in at Quantico over the years. Now we'll open it up. Senator, I have to ask you about two things that were said by Governor Moria today. 
Will your site cost a billion dollars more? Governor Moore, his words, not mine, yesterday, said that if you ignore the executive order on racial diversity here, that it would make a mockery of what the president has promised. Respectfully, those cost estimates are totally wrong out of left field and have no basis in fact. I say that as the senator from Virginia. I say that as chairman of the Intelligence Committee, number one. And number two, um, we, and, and I want Tim to echo on this, we welcome the equity comparison. But the idea that you're not also going to compare cost, transportation, flexibility of site, and the needs of the FBI to ignore those would also be I think, a disgrace to the Biden administration and to the F men and women of the FBI. Who is suggesting that we ignore the equity executive order? No one. No one is suggesting that. We embrace it. This is the first major site decision that will ever be made by the GSA that includes a specific equity component. We embrace that. We embrace that. So the notion that somebody's going to ignore it? No, we embrace it. We just assert that the Springfield site meets and exceeds the equity criteria. Senator, Senator your argument is that you're equating to equity with diversity, though, when you talk about that, that Fairfax County is the second wealthiest country county in America, and that it's hard to argue that they've been left behind on the equity scale the same way Prince George's has. And that you're just sort of oh, excuse me. Let, me, let me just answer your question. Equity in America today, and equity in terms of the needs of the FBI, ref reflect racial equity, reflect faith-based equity, reflect ethnic equity, Springfield, African-American, Latino, Asian Pacific. To ignore the broad breadth of equity in America would be a huge disappointment. And, and the other comment, um, there were decisions made Jerry Conley can speak to this better than I. Um, 15, 20 years ago, where the adjacent communities decided where they wanted to put their priorities. Fairfax County put their priorities in investing in one of the nation's best public education systems. People have voted with their feet. The number of immigrants that have come because they wanted those that public education system don't penalize the investments that were made that maybe other jurisdictions didn't choose to make. Right here. Senator's proximity to Quantico was rated 35% weighted for Look, Excuse me, excuse me. That is just flat out wrong. The criteria that No, the, the criteria. The 35% said needs of the FBI. Quantico was one of five items listed. Mission compatibility. Mission compatibility. Co co collaboration with the adjacent parts of the intelligence community. It is a... It is just factually wrong. Maryland is it is factually wrong. And listen, rather, I, 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 again, we want the, the GSA and the FBI to make this decision choice. Ask the GSA. Look at the criteria. People are, uh, that misrepresentation, you know, and the idea that suddenly you shouldn't consider the amount of traffic between FBI headquarters and Quantico, think about that from the sustainability standpoint. Or, and this is why the former intelligence professional we had was so important today. You know, the FBI's job right now is not only to deal with Quantico, but I can tell you the amount of time the FBI has to deal with the CIA, the NRO, the NGA, the director of national intelligence, the, the fact that they have to also potentially go to the FBI record center, which is up in Winchester. I mean, those are just facts. I mean, Maryland, I'm sure they were promoting the proximity to the NSA, terribly important as well. But, but don't, don't, you know, uh, respectfully, I just say, look at what the criteria said. 35% based upon mission compatibility, and they list a series of factors. How they weigh one of those factors versus another, I don't know. But we made the case across all of those factors. Do you believe that it's fair to the taxpayer that that criteria gets 35% and the cost of the build out is only 10%? We think we are more successful than the Maryland site on cost and compatibility. Senator, could you please, you said it was flat out wrong that Maryland sites were significantly cheaper. Could you explain why, exactly what 
here, here is here, the, the, site, the site in Springfield is owned by the U.S. government, irrespective of whether we or Maryland win the FBI. The current tenant is moving. That has been the policy of the last three administrations. You want to, you the, the GSA has a, they, they committed to us that they have a current site selection plan and in the cost component of that plan, they are not looking at costs connected with other projects. They're just looking at the cost of the FBI project. So that's what they committed to us today and that gave us some sense of assurance. We're not concerned about that, but we don't think asking somebody to put their thumb on the scale makes any sense here. The FBI and GSA have set out criteria that are good criteria, and they should, they should follow those criteria. I mean, usually where I come from, asking a, a thumb on the scale is a bad thing. You know, we, 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 we want to avoid thumbs on the scale rather than encourage and promote thumbs on scales. So we don't encourage thumbs on scales. We just say you got criteria. Look at the right criteria and make a decision. You know, and again, one one last one point comment on this as well. Um, and there was lots of speculation of why the previous administration did it. Maryland and Virginia were outraged when the previous administration, White House, put the thumb on the scale to try to slow down this process. And there was speculation about why they wouldn't want the FBI to move and what the FBI might pose in terms of, of um, location for other facilities. Um, we think there's a process here. We think it ought to be fair. We think it ought to be transparent. And I think it is a would be a huge mistake to have political thumbs on the, on the scale at this point. Again, I think I think they're going to. They've said they're going to go back for further consultation. I mean, they're going to go back. They didn't say further consultation. They said they want to go back and kind of work through um, at this. We don't have a uh, uh, a timeline. You know, the one thing that we all uh, agreed on. I'm sure our friends in Maryland uh, would as well. This process. You know, we're close to 12 years now. It's gone on way too long. Last question, right here. Let's, let's put it like this. The, um, the Maryland delegation, some members of the Maryland delegation, were very forceful in the negotiation around the final budget bill about trying to force the Budget Act to require reweighting of the criteria. Tim and I were in the room. There was a compromise. That compromise was you get another consultation, but the law is quite clear. There's going to be, if they follow the law, no reweighing of the, con of the criteria. Thank you all very much. Thanks. Supervisor, can we ask you a question? Supervisor. Oh, help, please help me. Help, help. Million people, million people are dead in Tigray, Ethiopia. Did anybody care? Remember your time. Anybody care? Did anybody care?